Hey everybody, it's Rob from Man Sewing and I have had the best summer ever and I know you have too because you've been following along at Man Sewing here, but it is that time for back to school week and it was time for new backpacks for my kids. That's right, you know I have a son and a daughter and one of the things that was really fun for me is I have some very good friends at the Ross Dress for Less stores and we were kind of collaborating on this idea and they actually funded this project. They gave me a gift card to go out and find the backpacks and as many supplies as I could, so thanks again Ross, appreciate that. But what was really fun for me was creating this tutorial because I wanted the backpacks to be cool and special, but also safe and functional. So a couple of things we're gonna look at today is how to handle working around nylon. We're not gonna be able to iron anything to these packs. We're gonna to have to do gluing or hand sewing, I know, hand sewing on all of this stuff. But the other thing is some safety ideas. So let's just kind of get the safety concept out of the way right away so you know where my brain was going the entire thing. With these backpacks, whether for my son or my daughter, and I'm gonna show you on my son's pack and I'm gonna walk you through the how-tos on my daughter's because it's almost finished. You wanna go ahead for safety and identify your pack from all four sides, but also you really don't ever wanna do something where you're going to be putting a name, like your kid's name, on the outside of the pack. There's much better ways to do it, and actually on this one, I have taken my name and my phone number and just written it right there on the inside of the pack. So it's private, but if we were to lose the pack, we could certainly get it back. So first thing, no children's names on the outside of the backpacks. That's just a good safety idea, right? But in thinking along with safety at Ross, I found kind of near the front counter, these really cool flashing bicycle lights. They're actually supposed to go for your shoes, but you can put them anywhere. So you just push them to turn them on and off. And my son is old enough to ride around at dusk now. So I wanted something on his pack that would keep him seen by the automobiles. And this was just a nice little rubberized clip that just wraps around the pack. So this is just gonna go through here, clip on, and I'm not trying to be mean to my daughter, but she's just not old enough to ride around at night yet. So she doesn't get the flashing lights yet. So those are secured through the loops that were already on the backpack. But if you're also a cyclist, this is something else you should check out. This is a very cool, it's a reflective tape, right? So things like this could be stitched to the backpack in all different locations. You could actually take and make extra loops of this where you would just go ahead and fold and secure and you could put those through loops in the backpack if you wanted extra illumination or extra re reflection on the pack. So this is a really cool trim that is a reflective tape. So keep that in mind as you're working through some of your creative ideas, right? So yeah, basically with safety is make sure that your kids can be able to be seen at night and that you're not putting their names. Those are my major key points I want you to really focus on, right? Some of the other things that were really fun this summer, you know, that uh, my son was able to receive his uh, junior lifeguarding stuff. He's been doing it for the last couple of years, but he was very proud of his patch. So he wanted his uh, Morro Bay Junior Lifeguards patch right on the outside, but that was kind of fun because then it gave me the theme for the pack. And so then on this side, and this is actually something I was really excited to try because I have never done any kind of hand embroidery. I used embroidery floss and kind of did like the, um, you know, Red Cross kind of idea on the side kind of as a rescue. So the whole thing is rescue pack is what we're playing with. Also, because it was kind of a surf theme, I went ahead and took a paint pen and I marked on the outside of the same pen I used on the inside and drew kind of a wave. I've got a fun tutorial about reverse applique out there that's very similar. I bet you recognize that, right? So anyways, you can draw with these uh, water-based uh, acrylic paint pens um, on just about any surface. There are some that are more fabric safe than others, so make sure you're doing your testing, right? Then another thing I came up with was just putting the idea of a, of a loop hold across the top, something nice and comfortable. And finally, a button on the front, again, identifiable by all four sides of the pack. So let me show you how to do some of these things on my daughters. Okay, so now you're looking at my daughter's pack and I wanna show you how I did most of this stuff. So for a button on the front, a lot of packs have some sort of a loop that is connected to the front. And what I did is I simply hand stitched, and all of the thread you're gonna see me using right now is polyester for construction. We'll use cotton threads when we get into the embroidery on the, the side pockets. I have already stitched throughout the holes in the button itself. I wanted you to see a really easy way to tie a knot when you can't really tie a knot underneath, right? It's gonna be really hard to get our fingers up underneath there. So one of the things I do is I take and in the air with a double twist, I kind of start to form my loop already. 
and then I'm going to actually wrap that around the back end of the button. It's kind of like if you do the old style um, corded buttons that you do like on a wool coat, you know, where they're lofted. I'm forgetting the name right now of, of that specific style, but it's got the little tab on the back. So I'm using my thread there to grab a hold and then I can pull it in and I've actually made a very secure knot back there. Let me do that again so you can see it. So at least two, if not three twists. And then I'm going to go around my button because that makes, takes that loop and it forms around the thread that's holding the button on. And I pull it taut. That's not going to slip off of there. And now I can sneak my scissors down and trim that and the button will be secure. So that's one of the ways you can tie a knot from the top side when most of your sewing had been done from the other side. Years and years ago at a lake, I got these cool little whistles. My daughter's much younger, so I like to have a little safety whistle right up front for her. So that's just going to tuck right in there and stay. And it's really close so she can get it to her mouth if she needed while walking home from school or something like that. That's another safety feature is whistles. Now, let's check out the back. And on the back, we're going to talk about how to deal with this embroidered patch. My daughter's a Girl Scout, and so she's been working on her cookies and things like that and doing real good. So. First of all, she wanted her patch right where her brother's was, you know, dead center in the middle of the pack, right? So for that reason, I actually had to unsew. I didn't like, there was some of the wording, you know, the label on the pack that came across. So I just took out a seam ripper and it was embroidered. So I just wiggled that in from the top and removed the stitching from the letters that were going to come out from on the outside of my embroidered patch there. So I just cleaned that up. Now, one of the things, you may or may not be able to see from home is I've already stitched all of the green down as I go around, but it's actually not the easiest position to work within. So it's fun and as creative as some of these ideas are, some of them you've got to really think, how are we going to get in there? Because we don't want to necessarily stitch on the inside of the pack. So when working from this way, I'm actually using my hand needle. And the first thing I'm going to do is just literally set a stitch. Let's back up. I have a complete loop of polyester thread. You probably can't see that because I can't see that. And I still have decently young eyes. So it's a complete loop, not a single strand, and it's knotted at the end. And I'm gonna come in close to where I wanna start. And I'm actually bending the pack. So I'm exaggerating right now, but I'm bending the pack. And I'm gonna go underneath just that layer of nylon. Poke through here. And then before I do anything else, this needle tip is going through that loop of thread to basically form a slip knot. This is how I do all of my knots and all of my tying when I'm hand stitching so that I never have to worry about pulling the needle off of the thread. From that point on, I need to get one stitch through and there is black thread around the tail of my cat here. So I've chosen to use black thread for my hand stitching. So now that I have the first stitch set, this is what I want you to be able to see. I'm gonna to try to do my best so that you can see it. I know we're looking at some small stuff here. I'm gonna go in near that black thread again. I'm gonna come out and I'm bending the pack because I can't bend the needle and then bring it through and I'm going to loop around. So the next stitch again will come in from the top of the pack or the top of the embroidery and loop around and you don't wanna to get too far away from the edge of your embroidery. And as well, you're not going to be putting any load or pressure on this. So close is good enough on this one. Okay, through the top and around. And that's how I went ahead and stitched on the patch. Go all the way around, knot it at the end, just like you had done at the beginning, very secure. Now this is another fun one, real easy to do. I found a button, shank button. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> all of you are probably looking it up and typing it right now in the comments below. I appreciate that, thank you, but I won't read them until this has been edited. So anyways, this was a shank button like you would on those old wool coats. So I just stitched the end of the zipper pull to the shank button so it works as a pull, but it's also cool and creative, but it seems to always hang with the decorative side of the button pointing out. So I really like that embellishment. Remember, it's the simple things that mean so much. And just choosing a theme for my children, I think, meant the most to them anyways. My daughter has got nice long uh, hair. So this was another fun one here that I created. This was a daisy chain or a loop of hair ties that I found. So I will show you real quickly how to handle your hair tie loops. This is another fun one. But basically, you're going to want to start with this thing almost folded in half. And then the next loop is going to go through. 
if you've been playing with those rubber band bracelets, it's really fun. The first one's actually almost easier to start with one rubber band than the other, one finger through, and another finger through like that. Now for me, it's easiest if this is locked onto something. So now that that's locked on, I can just keep feeding loops and loops and loops until I've created this entire daisy chain around. And then at the end, one of the loops comes free and pulls forming a slip knot. And then that can be clipped onto her backpack just like that. So she always has a cool embellishment, life color scheme going on, but she always has something functional for her hair if she needs as well, okay? Now, moving over to the side pockets. I must pat myself on the back if I can, without getting my arms too sore, of course. This was my most fun idea that I came up with. I had never thought about utilizing the mesh on the side pocket for an embroidery, but boy, it really worked easy. So on my sons, I took a entire skein of embroidery floss and put it all through the needle and folded it in half. Are you wondering right now if I'm gonna have a giant spider web on my hands? I am. For my daughters, I took two colors of floss and ran it through the needle. Oh my goodness. How fortunate is that? So I have all the strands of the two skeins of floss running through there. And then for that, I am simply going to use one of these very large kind of blunt tip needles. And I'm just simply going under, over, under, over. Remember that old ball game we used to play around the schoolyard? Under, over as we go through like that. And then about every five or six loops, I'm just gonna pull the needle through so that it's not too difficult later. And then this was the trick I found. So I get my threads kind of organized and then I put my hand back in because remember this is elastic so you want it to stretch a little bit. So I put my hand back in and loosen the stitches up and then I come back in and back to our old game of under, over, under, over. Now, you cross stitchers out there. You must be dying right now. This is awesome, right? You're thinking to yourself a whole new medium because you can do all kinds of awesome designs. A straight line for me was creative enough. I had never done any kind of handwork like this before, but as I'm looking through it, I can see there's all kinds of fantastic designs and motifs you could put in. Again, though, I'm gonna remind you probably not to put a name embroidered through there. An initial would work, but not a name, just, just for safety again. So that's a really easy way to address the water bottle pockets Thought that was super, super fun, right? Another thing you can do is for, especially for the ladies, a lot of us, well, and I can say this because I used to have big long hair, love to have something you can put your hair back with. And so this one I just found because the color was fun. And that I just call a stuffy. And that's just gonna go in this pocket. But again, the pack is identifiable by all four sides. So here, here, the front, right, the back. Now, one of the last things I have done as I showed you in my other pack, I was using these water-based acrylic paint pens. Now, we can open this up anywhere we want, and we can take in here and we can write a name as long as it's not on the outside. Here's one of the tricks of these paint pens. They have a roller ball inside, and sometimes you have to activate the tip. So I'm poking down on some cardboard till I start to see some paint come out over here. And then, now I'm ready, and I can come back in here and I can begin to write our name and if you're worried about bleed through you can make sure you test it on a bottom corner it's going to be wet now yep didn't quite have the tip activated there so now i can go through and i can put my name and my phone number down the road as i am working so that covers and this is going to be wet for a few moments so i'm just going to kind of let that sit so as you can see, I'm almost ready for back to school week and super excited. I wanna take a moment and say thank you very much to Ross Dress for Less for encouraging me to do the project and of course kicking down the supplies. You guys are the best. Actually, you guys at home are the best. You're the best fans ever and I really appreciate all the comments and feedback. So make sure you send me photographs of how you've embellished your backpacks for your back to school week and we'll see you next time here at Man Sewing. Mm -hmm.